Hi, my name is Natalia Perez. I'm a strawberry pathologist at the University of Florida Gulf Coast Research and Education Center. We have prepared this video summarizing our latest recommendations for management of charcoal rot caused by Macrofumina thazolina. Most of the research that was done that based these recommendations were done by our postdoc, Dr. Juliana Baccio. We also would like to acknowledge our collaboration with Dr. John Nolan. Hi, I'm Juliana Baggio and I'm going to talk about the management of charcoal rot in Florida strawberry. Charcoal rot is a very important disease for Florida strawberry industry and when not managed properly can cause up to 80% plant mortality. The fungus survives in the soil and particularly in strawberry crowns that remain in the soil from one season to the next. It survives through resistant structures known as microsclerotia. In fields where the plastics were used, the not present in old crowns from the previous season can survive over summer and serve as the not source to infect new transplants. Overhead irrigation for plant establishment will splash the not from these old crowns in the row meadows that will infect new transplants. Therefore, we want to present our current recommendations for charcoal rot management, which are based on our most recent research. First, you should adopt an integrated management approach. For example, in fields with high incidence of charcoal rot, you should not reuse plastic in the following season. The management should start at the end of the season with crop destruction, which should be done with fumigants, such as the Matum products. Our results from sampling soil and crowns for infected areas before crop termination and after crop termination show a significant reduction in the pathogen population after fumigation. However, fumigation does not completely eliminate all the inoculum present in the area. Another way to reduce inoculum is by removing crop residue from the field. Results from our trials have shown that macrofamina population in the soil is usually lower in the areas where crop residue was removed. But again, this practice only does not completely eliminate the inoculum in the soil. Unfortunately, the inoculum that remains in the area can build up during the summer, as shown in this table, in which soil and crown samples were taken in May and later on in September. Therefore, pre-plant fumigation in the fall is very important. In this picture, these two beds were not fumigated and high mortality due to charcoal rot occurred. Results from our trials have shown that combination of 1,3-D and chloropicrine products such as Piclor 80 and Tilom C35 as well as methane products KPAM and VAPAM work the best. It's very important to pay attention to optimum conditions for fumigation, for example, soil moisture, temperature, as well as injection period when applying products through the drip tape. If time of injection is reduced because soil is too wet, disease control can be jeopardized. Another tool to manage charcoal rot is by selecting cultivars that are more tolerant to the pathogen. Among the currently used cultivars, sensation and brilliance are more tolerant than radiance and beauty. In summary, an integrated approach management should follow these recommendations. Do not reuse plastic. Do crop termination at the end of the season. Do pre-plant fumigation in the fall. And select tolerant cultivars. Adopting all these approaches will help you managing shark rot and minimizing losses with this disease. Thank you for watching and please do not hesitate to contact us by email or phone if you have any questions.